Hello everybody and welcome back to F1 Manager 23 where we are about to dive into the Austrian Grand Prix and we've got another sprint race coming up so let's dive into it and see how we get on. Yes hello everyone welcome back to Haas and we are doing okay to be honest actually we are still fifth in the constructors going ahead of Alpine after the last race which was good if you didn't see that episode go check it out it was um it was good fun in Barcelona to be honest we did not too bad he says, forgetting what the results were. Yes, Kevin Magnussen finished 7th um, and Nico Hulkenberg finished 13th. But Kevin Magnussen getting us some points was very, very good um, as well. Was that right? Is that Was that right? No, that wasn't right because it was Canada last and Kevin Magnussen won it. I thought we won the last race. I was just being a bit of an idiot. Um, yes, I absolutely love Canada. Kevin Magnussen recovered from the red flag situation where Nico Hulkenberg was out and uh, we won it. Yeah, and that put us back above Alpine, and now we're off to Austria. It's, it's all up here. It's all up here somewhere. Oh, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Right, uh, we need to put some new car parts into... Um, oh, we've only got one of these left. Emergency manufacturer, one of them. We'll get one for nine. Oh, my God, we're we're in debt. It's all right. We're gonna have a good. We're gonna have a good race. We're gonna have a good race. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's all on car two. Lovely stuff. Um, that was the front wing. Car two also needs some side pods. Do we have any of those left? No, we don't have any of those left either. Um, One point eight million. Sorry, Nico, but uh, we're gonna cancel that, and you're gonna get the old ones going on to car two. And what else do we need on car two? We need some suspension. Uh, swap out one of those we have none of number two and we have four of number one how much does it cost to emergency manufacture some of these 1.2 million no thank you wow okay so so nico's gonna be in a bit of trouble in this race he's gonna be in a bit of a world of pain definitely to manufacture some parts because we're 2.5 million pounds in debt and uh yeah heading into the Austrian Prix. i mean i i think you know, if I remember rightly, so qualifying position, we'll get two people into the top uh, 14. I'm pretty confident of that. Uh, Q3, we'll get one driver into Q3, one driver into Q2. Uh, we'll go for a finish position of one driver in the top 10. And we will do one of these finish position streaks as well. So one driver in the top 12. Nah, top top 12 top 12 for five races so when that's done we get 1.3 million pounds i probably should have done that a bit shorter so that we actually get more money up front but anyway we're we're in a decent position actually i think so if we look at car one i've got a feeling since our last episode we now have new underfloors and a new chassis if I remember rightly. So we are keeping upgrading the car as well as um, designing for next year as well. So it is, we're in a, not not a pickle. We're not in a pickle for next year, but you can see we're not quite, uh, it was the front wing, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we haven't done any of the research for the front wing yet to counteract these technical aspects. We've done a bit of research for the rear wing. So we've leveled out the 2024 changes for the high speed corners. We need a bit more in medium speed and a lot more in low speed as well, but have got some decent rear wing uh, improvements. Nothing's needed on the side pods. The underfloor we need to do some researching as well uh, and suspension needs it as well. So between now and the end of the season, we're gonna do as much research as possible. But up next is the Austrian Grand Prix. So I'll go and do practice. We'll be back for the sprint and then come back for, oh, we'll do qualifying then the sprint. We'll figure it out. I don't really know what's going on. Let's dive into it. Okay, so practice done. And um, yeah, we're not in too bad a position. Driver prep 71% overall and 73 for both drivers. But our actual setups aren't too bad at all. And it is time for the sprint race, which I'm excited about. Oh, well, no, so the qualifying for the sprint race. That's what I was meant to say. I'm a little bit not with it today. But um, yeah, let's get some good components back in both cars then. Obviously, we're expecting K-Mag to do a little bit better than Nico, purely because of the components on the cars in like the the actual car itself. The build of the car is be much better for um, K-Mag because he's got all the new components. He, he is probably our number one driver. I do think it's pretty close. But um, between the two of them, they are a pretty good partnership. And we need to decide pretty soon 
if we're going to um, push into next season with both these drivers or if we're going to replace look to replace one of them maybe look to replace nico but i really want to get nico a podium at some point so we'll have to see how that goes we're going to go for the three lap routine um with this one with both drivers as well because i think i've got this nailed now to understand the best way to do it so let's get into qualifying one and uh see if we can have some magic with Haas in qualifying one that would be absolutely ideal so drs is enabled bottas and signs go out we'll send out magnuson now uh, let him go out there as the pit crew are doing their things getting the car ready so uh yeah we'll send signs magnuson then we'll get hulkenberg out as well take manual control i'll go and do all the manual stuff we'll be back for the flying laps for both drivers okay so k mag is just about to start his flying lap you can just see him coming around this final corner we're going to get his acceleration in albon and Sargent are both pitting which means uh magnuson should have a bit of a good run here and then nico is a, again going to start his flying lap and push and everything should be in a good position magnuson may hit a bit of traffic with stroll but he should be able to get out of the way in a pretty decent position as magnuson comes through and goes pole position for k mag it's a shame it's only q1 but um, yeah, pole position there for K Mag. He's absolutely loving 0.2 kilos of fuel. I hope he can get round as uh, Hulkenberg is going to come across the line as well. His time hasn't quite come in yet. And Hulkenberg goes second. So it does definitely go to show that this is a very good way of doing it. Now we had to keep them out for one more lap to get the tyres up to temperature. So now we just. No, yeah, it's a red flag. K Mag. Red flag. So K Mag ran out of fuel, which I think has then saved Nico Hulkenberg. So K Mag retires, which puts Nico through because Nico can now just sit in the. He doesn't need to do anything. He can just sit in the garage. I think that, I think that puts K Mag into Q2. But he won't be able to run in Q2 because the car technically retired. So we'll see what happens because we're not going to put K-Mag back out. But the pace is there. The, 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 the tactic works. I just didn't put enough fuel in the car. So, um, yeah, an interesting one there. With four minutes to go in this one, all the drivers are going to come out. At, at the moment, K-Mag on provisional pole and Hulkenberg in provisional second. But we'll see if that changes. Alonso does go quicker. Um... But still, it's got it's got some pace in it. This has this car has got some pace in it. There we go. Everybody's finished. So I think Perez is out. Is he? He's got to be on a speedy lap. Let's just have a look at Perez here because he's got quite a lot to do. He has got a completely free track in front of him though, so I'm, I'm going to assume he's going to jump and push Norris out. But Sergio Perez has got a lot to do into the final corner of uh, Austria. Stays within track limits and. He's about to cross the line, and yes, jumps up into fifth. He was never in danger. Oh, wow, he's in... Well, this is saying that he's actually allowed to run in Q2, so... Okay, interesting. So we'll go with an additional one lap of fuel this time. Um, onto the softs, and then we'll go... No, actually, because that was three. So we'll go three with one additional lap. Yes, that's correct. Three, one additional lap onto the soft tyre there. Right, manage qualifying two. Can K Mag, is he allowed to go out again? No, he's not. He has retired from the session, yeah. So um, we can just focus that be the green light. On, uh, on Nico. So let's get Nico out there. We'll take manual control and see what Nico can do. We're going a bit fast there. Okay, so we're going to be starting our flying lap. He's got a bit of traffic with Sainz and Perez. Now we've got enough fuel in the car for this one. So it's, I'm wondering how much that's going to weigh him down. If we can get Nico into Q3, this would be absolutely massive. So he's going to fly past Perez as well as he starts his flying lap. I think he's got held up by Nick De Vries coming out of the pits, which is really annoying. You can see Perez with a lot of pace catching him up there. Nico goes seventh, so it's nowhere near as good as uh, the... Q1 time, we'll compare it when we get through because I don't think we're going to have enough time to get out again but so Alonso will go quicker, K-Mag we know is going to finish bottom 
Yeah, Nico may be in trouble here. Because Alonso's going to go quicker. In fact, I'm expecting Alonso. Oh, Alonso comes into the pit, so... With 2 minutes 55, we could risk it and go for the two-lap flyer. Let's go confirm. I'm going to assume this is going to do the bug where it doesn't then let us out. Yes, it does. So in there, run plan, two laps. I don't think we're going to have enough time to do two laps, but we will try it. Send out. Right, Nico. Only sending you out because you're in a bit of danger. Yeah, so you can see we've dropped into 10th. So, Nico Hulkenberg. He's going to start that flying lap. Yeah, he's not going to get enough time for two flying laps, I don't think. Because he's got... Yeah, that's the checkered flag. So, it's this we'll one flyer. Checker. Which means he's probably not going to improve, I'd imagine. Because we set... I think he's going to be out. Yeah, Alonso. I thought Alonso would go quicker. So we're both drivers out in Q2. Um, 15th and 11th. Not too bad for the sprint race. Okay, here we are for the sprint race then. So the mediums can make it. The softs can just about make it. But I think we push ever so slightly on the mediums. And uh, we're going to do that with both drivers. Because I think the hards pushing, they would definitely make it. It's 11 seconds quicker to push on the hards. Uh, what's that? That's a 26.44. That's a 26.37. That's three seconds. So, a 26.37 plays a 26.41. Technically, the hards with a push is quicker. All right. That's what we'll try with K-Mag. We'll give it a go. Uh, sorry, with Nico. So, K-Mag is going to go mediums on a slight push. K-Mag, uh, Nico is just going to push all the way. I don't know why I keep getting both of those mixed up. Really annoying qualifying given that we were in, at one point, first and second in Q1. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Right, into the sprint race. Right, we're waiting for five red lights and we're away. So this is going to be very interesting to see how this works out. I'm going to assume everyone on medium other than Nico. Um, but he's going to have the advantage of being able to push all the way round as uh, Magnussen is up to 13th, Holgenberg's still in 11th. We're going to have a bit of a battle on our hands here with Sonoda and George Russell in front. So hopefully we'll be okay. Let's tell them to put... There's a... Oh! Is that a red flag? Okay. It looked like they'd come to a complete standstill in Turn 1, but obviously not. Magnussen did drop down a lot of positions, though. 14th and 15th, both drivers now. So not a good start in the sprint. That Turn 1 is dangerous in Austria. A very tight right-hander but um yeah we just need to make this work now for the sprint race because we are faster than cars in front of us but top eight are the people that get points i think that may be a bit far away for us okay both drivers doing a good job with 15 laps to go we are up to 11th and 12th well k-mag's up into 11th where yeah i mean it <laughs> It's an improvement, right? We're, we're moving up slowly. So 11th and 12th, but we're quite a way off um, Esteban Ocon. Um, we do actually have quite a lot of battery left. So I think we'll push it a little bit with K-Mag. See if he can close that gap to Ocon um, and see how it goes. And it's going to be interesting to see what Nico's tyres do at the end. He should be quicker. And K-Mag is back into um, DRS as well, which is awesome on Ocon. So now if we can push Hulkenberg to catch up to Kevin Magnussen and see if we can work as a team. That would be absolutely epic. Okay, we've got a, a, a crash involving several cars. No safety car yet. Verstappen is dropping down the order. Oh, it's right at the front. It is. It's Verstappen and Carlos Sainz, I think that is number 16. No, Charles Leclerc, sorry. Oh, my word. Verstappen off into the wall. Not happy with it. He's going to be losing out on big points in the sprint. And I'm going to assume that is a penalty for Charles Leclerc. It is a penalty for Charles Leclerc. But Magnussen up into ninth, Only one point. One place away from a point in the sprint. Hulkenberg up to 11th. But K-Mag on the challenge of uh, Pierre Gasly in front of him. I think we push him, right? Let's try and get past. We do need to think about fuel at some point. But let's get Magnussen into the points and then think about what we can do. He's on very aggressive overtakes because he is in peak confidence right now. So hopefully K-Mag can, uh, can make something happen because Gasly's not far off Russell. And if we get one, 
we could potentially get the other uh, as well. Nico, I think his tyres are holding him back a little bit running on the hards, but we'll see how it goes. You can see here K-Mag is really catching up to the two in front. Pierre Gasly making a move, and George Russell has to slow down. That should give Kevin Magnussen a chance to have a run at them here as we're going to get into this. In fact, let's go to, very quickly, Visor Cam. Look at, we don't use this view enough, by the way. Coming to in glorious 4K as well. But, um, yeah, still trying to make that move. Oh, he's having a look down the inside, is K-Mag. He's got his battery to use. Pierre Gasly there, just turning into the long left hander. You can get the foot down very quickly after this bit of the corner. And uh, just ease it out. Go on, K-Mag. Get it done. He's having a look. He's having a look. You can cut across the pit entry bit here to get onto the inside. And I think that's what he's going to do against Pierre Gasly. He's all over. He's like, his helmet is shaking around all over the place. And he has got past. K-Mag is in the point. And we'll get DRS on George Russell as well. So we're not going to stop this here. We're going to keep pushing. This is going to be a horrible corner, into, I was going to say, into that first corner. And go on. Get that foot down with the DRS. He's giving him the little shimmy to the right. Move to the left. And K-Mag is going to get that done. Lovely, lovely stuff from K-Mag there. As you can see, the battle still going on. Ah, deploy that battery. Make sure you get past him. Get the traction out of the corner. Because if K-Mag can get into some serious points up to 7th, he's still fighting with the Mercedes, who does have DRS. Um, but we are well in that fight now. Lovely stuff from K-Mag. We have another yellow flag with another crash involving cars. It's the other Red Bull. It is Sergio Perez into Alonso. Whoa, I don't know if he gave him enough space. Perez managed to get back on the track and keep going. Again, not happy with the driving of his counterpart. And that will be Sergio Perez getting the penalty in that one. Or is it Alonso? It doesn't say at the moment who's got the penalty. Magnussen up into seventh doing really well. We were just trying to manage a bit of fuel when that happened. But... Um, yeah, we're in a good spot at the moment, especially with K-Mag. Nico up into 10th as well. So both drivers doing a very, very good job at the moment of getting up the places. Because obviously this dictates where we start in the Grand Prix. So yeah, in a, a very good place at the moment. It's K-Mag. He's still at peak. He's still at peak uh, confidence. So we're going to get him on to always defend against Russell. Because I don't think we're going to be catching signs. And Hulkenberg is a peak as well. So let's if you're in the position, mate, go for those aggressive manoeuvres. Lovely stuff. Okay, there's three laps to go, and K-Mag is dropping off at his tire. He ran out he ran a little bit wide on one of the corners, which has caused his tires to drop off. So he's probably gonna drop down the order, especially with a stappen behind him. But Hulkenberg is now trying to chase down George Russell on his hard tires. Which is, uh, which is interesting. So we're maybe not going to get points here. 2.4 seconds off George Russell. But yeah, running wide for K-Mag really killed his race, killed his tyres. So now he's just got to sort of see those through to the end. I think we'll even have to put him on light to make sure he gets there. But yeah, drama at the front. A bit of drama in the middle. Not much talking about at the back either. So, But uh, Nico Hulkenberg is doing all right. I assume, yeah, his... Let's go neutral and medium. Because his, his confidence has taken a big hit. But, uh, yeah, K-Mag confidence doing very, very well indeed. In fact, let's just get K-Mag to avoid high-risk curbs because we just want to make sure the cars cars do make it through on this one. And, yeah, Nico, 2.8 seconds. I think it's going to be 9th and 11th or 12th. Not too much more we can do. So we've just crossed the line, 10th and 11th. Um, it's an improvement from where we qualified, but Verstappen, 9th. I mean, we're going to have a bit of trouble keeping with the leaders. Alonso and Stroll, both in the top three. Really good for them. But, um, yeah, not a bad race. Not bad. K-Mag's little wide turn made him lose the points. But I'm not too, not too annoyed. Okay, so we're heading into the race where there is a heavy rain to nearly start, like, to basically start the race, which is um, interesting, to say the least, right? That is going to make it very, very interesting. It's starting partly cloudy and then we'll absolutely tip it down after a couple of laps. So I think you sort of have to start softs and then play it by ear to see what's going to happen. Because it's quite changeable throughout the race. So I think that is what we're going to do. There might be some teams that just start on the intermediates. But I sort of feel like gunning it on the softs and see where you get to 
is the plan here. Um, a wet race. A wet race is always an interesting race, generally. Red flags, yellow flags, safety cars, virtual safety cars. Let's see how it goes. It looks like everyone doing soft tyres is the sensible approach. Let's see if anyone's risked it. One, medium for De Vries, which is an interesting call. 70% um, chance of rain in four minutes. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to get really wet as well. It's going to be full wet as soon as it starts raining, basically. So let's let the drivers do their thing as everyone comes down into the really, really nasty... Um, first little corner and everyone gets well our drivers get through it unscathed which is all we want to see as uh, K-Mag and Nico battling with Verstappen and Leclerc in front of them something we didn't really expect to see in this but we know we can push the tyres we can push the fuel we can push the DR the ERS um, until the rain comes basically which is not going to be very far away at all but um, you know we've got a hat in the points before the rain starts so I think both our drivers are pretty good in the rain. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm jinxing it by saying that, but we'll um, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, both drivers in 10th and 11th, where we where we qualified. No early movement in the uh, in the race, but we are chasing down Max Verstappen. We want you, Max. I, I do. I want him to join Haas, but he probably won't. So yeah, we'll um. We'll, we'll leave it as it is. We'll be back probably when the rain starts. Okay, the rain has started as everyone literally just passes the pit lane. Now, I think there is going to be... I think it's going to be basically wet. And I think we pit early. Uh, not Lando Norris over to Kolkenberg, but we decided to just ignore that. Surely that is full wet. Surely that is full wet. Let's carry on and see what it looks like in terms of how quickly it's coming down there is already a yellow flag happening there as joe locks up on turn one but it's gonna be i want to have a look basically as we get to the second the penultimate corner second to last corner is when i want to have a look to see what we're going to be doing K Mag battling with max verstappen so this is it this is the corner to decide what we're going to do it's half a mil it's half a mil and it's there. That's full wet. That is full wet. And I think we're going to be take the bold call of just bringing K-Mag in. I was going to say double stack, but I don't think we are. We're going to leave Nico out for another lap. Or do we bring him in? Do you know what? I think we. I think he's not in the points. I think we get both of them in as soon as we possibly can. So let's see. Oh, they both went past no nico made it in okay so they are going to be on different laps so nico made it in to the pits wet weather is predicted soon so nico pits before anyone else he's going to come out it's definitely going to be a damp track when he comes out so it's a good stop 2.5 isn't too bad for this has team at the moment no traffic when he exits no one else pitted on this lap so it's going to be very very interesting Maybe it was one lap too early, but uh, we're going to see how this goes. Now, we don't want to shred these tyres straight away, so we'll just go aggressive on the tyres. And K-Mag will be in next lap. Now, are people going to go to intermediate? Surely they're not. Surely that is full wet. So now it goes damp, right? It goes damp now, which should show Nico a little bit better, although he is still going to be pretty slow. And is anyone else going to pit? Stroll, no. Hamilton is in. So Hamilton pits. Magnussen pits as well. You'll see Magnussen behind him. Hamilton is in. What is Hamilton going to do? It's only us and Magnussen. Hamilton's going intermediates. Magnussen is going full wets. It's a really bold call to go full wets this early. And it's a decent stop again, 2.4. So ha Hamilton is on the ideal tyre for right now. Our weather centre isn't the best weather centre. But we need this rain to really hammer it down. And it does look like it's going to do that. And it did say heavy rain. So let's uh, let's see how we get on. I just don't want to cook the tyres too much. As you can see, Nico's already getting a bit hot. Maybe I've balls this up. We need that to get to, what, 
four millimeters, I think it is. Is it four millimeters for um, for full wets? I can't remember. I think it's either three or four. But 80, 80, and 100, maybe we've gone a little bit too early. Let's wait and see. We'll come back and have a look. Okay, Alonso's pitting. If he goes on to the intermediates as well, I think we could be in a bit of trouble. We're at one and a half millimeters of rain. Lots of people coming into pit. The advantage will be if they go to intermediates and then it does go into full. Now he's going full wets. He's going full wets. So we, we made the right decision. Just a lap early. Gasly, full wets. Russell, full wets. Signs, full wets. Yeah, everyone's now doing full wets. So we've made the right decision just a lap early, I think. Just a, a couple of laps early. Because, oh, Magnussen is jumping, though. Magnussen's up into eighth. Wow, okay. Maybe we made the right decision with K-Mag. K-Mag coming on the right lap. Hulkenberg, maybe not so much. We'll see. But K-Mag does get out in front of other drivers and as it's really starting to rain now that's not a bad decision from the team with K-Mag. I'm happy with that. Yes, come on. Okay, and the other leaders are now pitting. Hamilton, I think, is still out on his intermediates. He is. But Perez, Stroll and Leclerc all in. Stroll has a pit stop issue as well which he's not going to be happy about. As um, K-Mag could potentially jump a few more people in the pits here. And he has jumped Leclerc. Wow. Yes, K-Mag. Come on. Come on. It's not even in full wet conditions yet. Okay, so we're now in full wet conditions on lap 12. Um, Leclerc is all over the back of Magnussen. But because there's no DRS, it's, it's a lot harder to pass. But yeah, full wet conditions. And it's going to peter out. My worry is that Hulkenberg's tyres aren't going to get to lap 20, whatever that is, 22 when we may then have to put on the intermediates because he's already at 49%. So we're going to have to bring those down and see what he can do. Magnussen, yeah, that's where we went on them a little bit early. I think we'll have to bring them both down and see how it goes. But a really good decision to pit Magnussen when we did to do the extra lap. But Hulkenberg, one lap too early. Okay, we're basically at the peak of the rain now and it's starting to drip down. So timing this is crucial and I really wish I knew what the conditions were for when you need to put certain tires in. I think it's four millimeters. Oh, there we go, naught to one, one to four. So yeah, okay, so anything under four millimeters. We're at 5.4 already. So we're not far away. Nico's tires should just about hang on. And we've got a gap between our drivers that means we can pit on the same laps now. So 5.3, it, it might be for Magnussen on this lap that we pit for inters and try and get a little bit ahead of the uh, ahead of the curve as you can see he's been caught by hamilton on those fresher wet tires because this is going to go into a four point something is it going to be in time for that corner we're going for it we're going for it he needs fresh tires onto the inters for k mag and nico as well uh pit options onto the inters Confirm there should be enough time between both of them that they then don't get in each other's ways. 4.6, and here comes K Mag into the pits. I really hope we've got this right. We got K Mag got it right going onto the wets at just the right time. It got him up to sixth. It's at 4.5 now. By the time this pit stop's done, we should come out and the track be pretty perfect for Inters. And no one else is pitting just yet. So there goes K-Mag. 2.5. Good stop. 2.51. Here comes Nico. Nico's in. And it's at 4.3 and continually coming down. So Nico is in. This would give the enough... It would give the, the pit crews enough time to get the tyres. Get ready. On it goes. Good stop. 2.50. Quicker than K-Mag stop as well. Right. Nico's going to time this really well for coming out. And then it's just a case of can K-Mag make up the time when everyone else is in the pits. Still nobody pits. The leaders don't pit. The leaders don't pit. Oh my god, it's going to be perfect damp conditions for these two. And we are going to tell them to go for it. Uh, we're going to go aggressive with both drivers. 
and that's it. It's hit under four, so just push everything. You need quick laps here, boys, because we need to make these time up. You can see Russell in, Gasly in. Oh, please say we've got this right. Please say we've got this right, because we're going to be gaining on all these people in front of us who are now just going to come into pit, are they? No, they don't. People stay out. Sonoda, Ocon, and Sargent all stay out. Which means we should catch them really easily. They're on wet tyres. They're on the wrong tyres for the condition. Come on. Come on. Keep working hard, Haas drivers. Come on. There's a yellow flag somewhere. But K-Mag is going to be... I think he's going to jump the Sergeant Ocon and potentially Russell before they've even pitted. Before they've even pitted. That is huge. And it's going to be Inters all the way home. So do these get there? Yeah, these, these Inters will get there on a little bit of push like that as well. Oh my god, we might have timed this absolutely perfectly. Nico, I'm not sure. He's a bit far back. But still, they don't pit. Wow, they obviously think they can get these wet tyres further in these conditions. But I think we might see a Russell win. We might see a Russell win here. If he can make up the time. But look at this. K-Mag already bringing them in. Like pulling these drivers in in front. He's doing a fantastic job. If they don't pit now, surely they're stupid. Sure, they're not. They're not pitting. Norris pits, finally. Oh my word. Come on, K-Mag. Come on. You can do it, son. You can do it. I've got all the confidence in the world in you. I mean, we've kept his... Um, ERS on as well. He's just absolutely gunning his ERS around a few laps here. He just needs to get the move done and he's going for it. He had a little look on um, Logan Sargent in the Williams who is still on those wet tyres so it should suit K-Mag to get past him here. He should be able to make it's probably going to be a long race I've commentated quite a lot of it and there we go. The grip of the intermediate tyres is working wonderfully well. Unless they think it's going to get to a millimetre. But it's pretty much flattening out at around three. So he is up into 11. Here we go. Alonso, Stroll, Verstappen, all pit. Sign stays out on wet. As does Perez and Leclerc. I don't know if Russell was close enough to jump them. He might do. But all these people in front haven't pitted yet onto intermediates. And Kevin Magnussen is catching them. It's like Hulkenberg might not be out of the points. Hulkenberg might not be out of the points yet. Now, again, these guys don't pit. Ocon doesn't pit. Sonoda does, so K-Mag will be jumping into the points. How far away is Nico? He is quite far away. He is quite far away. But K-Mag back in the points is what we love to see. With drivers on the wrong tyres in front of him as well. We're going to push to be about a kilo over fuel limit. As uh, Nico now... He's just coming down the pit lane and he's going to overtake a number of cars that are currently in the pits. He's going to jump all the way up into 13th, maybe? Let's see as he goes around turn one. There's a couple of cars coming out in front of him. Norris and Sargent are just out in front. There you go. So he should be able to catch them, hopefully. Okay, finally Hamilton comes in to pit off his wet tyres, which is he's been, he's been on them far too long. I think we're going to jump Lewis Hamilton here while he's in the pits because... He's not even into his area yet. He's going for the Inters. He's been held as well. It's not a good stop for Lewis Hamilton. But that pushes K-Mag up into 8th, which is awesome. And, um, yeah, let's just keep, keep pushing this along, boys. We're doing a really, really good job. It is going down still. It might be... It might be slick tyres at some point in this race. But a lot of these drivers stayed out for far too long on the wets. And, uh, well, they've paid the price for it. Russell didn't wasn't quite close enough to get to the lead of the race. Okay, so what's interesting now, 30 laps to go. We're, the rain is still reducing. But there's 80% chance of heavy rain in two minutes. I don't think I've, so. It's going to peak again. That will stay as intermediates, and then this may be slick. So we are on the right tyre still at the moment. Hulkenberg up into 11th, overtaking Norris and Sonoda. Um, he is gaining on Hamilton, but I don't think he's got enough about him to actually catch up. And then Russell um, is 1.4 seconds ahead of K Mag. You can just see him in front there. Again, gaining, but I don't know if there's enough in the tank for the Haas car to overtake 
uh, the Mercedes. But if we can get both of them, then we've got two drivers in the point. So we'll see how that one goes. Okay, so the rain is easing. I think we are going to get some slick tyre running here. Um, we're still keeping pace with George Russell with K-Mag, which is good. But I think the lack of new components in Hulkenberg's car is being a bit detrimental. I don't think he's going to quite get the points unless we pull off um, a really good uh, pit stop, basically, which he might get. K-Mag's just gone past the pit entry, so he'll be coming in next lap. But I'm thinking, if that's 1.37, Hulkenberg's there. It's only coming down. That rainwater is going off the track. You know what? We've risked it enough to this point. Again, he's out of the points. It's just a case of, from here on in, can you do... Now, softs on a bit of a wet track could be a problem. Okay, so you can't do full soft push, but you can do a full medium push. So we're going to go with that for Nico on this lap. Pit options, mediums, absolutely gun those mediums. You might as well gun these because you're coming in. Gun the fuel as well. That's for Nico. And then I think for K-Mag, we do the next lap. So let's keep an eye on Nico. So he needs a good stop. It's 1.3. Hopefully our weather center has given us the accurate reading here. Otherwise, it's, this is really going to screw us over because I think this is the pit. This is the stop to pit K-Mag. It's 1.29. It's still coming down, isn't it? It's still dropping. So just as Nico enters the pits, it's not getting any heavier. That's 1.29 now. That's going to be... Surely that's below one. Surely that is below one. It's these sort of calls that make this game so good. See, now he's done one more lap. He's done one more lap, hasn't he, as a old K-Mag. Add a stint. So that's saying that's 37 seconds quicker. But if you went mediums and push, it's 38. It still says the mediums is quicker by a second. Do we trust this or do we go with what is legitimately the fastest tyre? A 123.50 or a 123.51. That makes it just. It ends at 30%. That gives you a lot of leeway. We're going for softs. We're going for soft tyres for K-Mag. Onto the softs. Confirm the pit. Push these hard. Push. Uh, we'll leave that. We'll deploy the battery when you come out. So Nico in the pit lane. We're making bold decisions in this race. We are making some bold decisions. I mean, he's got a 16-second lead over Esteban Ocon, who's like uh, Nico Hulkenberg has. So he comes in. There are the medium tyres ready for him. It's 1.2. He's going to be pretty slow on this first lap coming out. It says he's going to be fighting Norris in 14th. But if this works, this is massive. Because Magnussen is just about to enter... We've pitted again ahead of everyone else. Is it just one lap too early again for Nico? That's the question. That is the question. 1.16. 1.15. I've never watched a little counter go so slowly in my life. 1.13. He's on to the softs. 15 laps to go. 1.11. Oh my word. If he comes out and still is in the points, that's huge as well, which I think he is. He's going to come out in front of Hamilton, and he's going to be on the perfect tyre for the conditions. Oh, my God. We may have timed this really, really well. Again, Nico may have been just a little bit too early for the pit stop, but this is going to be really interesting because it's going to be dry. Mm, oh, we need to, It's going to be dry. It's going to be dry. Don't stop, don't you dare, I was going to say, don't you dare stop at 1.0 something. 1.01, 1.00. It's dry. Okay, the track is dry now. Push. And push. We're on the perfect tyres, we need to make it count. Oh no. It's gone back into damp. It's gone back into damp. It's gone back into damp. Oh no. I've balls this up, people. 
He's got a 31 second lead over Ocon, so we could pit him on for a new fresh set of inters and see what he can do with 10 laps to go because that ain't coming out of, that's staying on inters, isn't it? Shit. I mean, he's got a 31 second lead over Ocon. Let's pit, get him in. We made a call. It was the wrong call. Oh. Nico's out of the point, so although it's painful, it's not too bad. He could pit and come out in front of Albon. If that now goes into soft territory, I'm going to be absolutely fuming. I mean, with where Nico is on the track, I'm sort of thinking we might as well just pit him. We got it wrong, we. I got it wrong, but... Uh, these are the... These are the decisions you make in this game. Oh, that is gutting. I thought we were going to get it just right. Okay, it should mean that 10th is ours, because Ocon shouldn't really catch us. But I'm, I thought it wasn't going to get any wetter. Maybe that's our weather centre being a little bit shit, but... Oh, the, the, the decisions in this game, they really make you think. But it's a fresh set of inters. It's another decent stop at 2.51. We're going to be, I think, well in front of Ocon. He's not even coming around the final corner, is he? So, um, Nico will come in as well. So, K-Mag is out. Nico's in. K-Mag can, let's push and get the deploy on just to make sure that we're in a good position. Um, we are still 10 seconds ahead of Ocon, so it was a very good stop there. Um, I did predict Nico would come out in front of Albon, so they're getting a lot of pit stop practice and they're doing a good job of it. They're doing some good stops, to be honest. But now it's a case of what our tyres are. They're a lot fresher than everyone else. Come on, boys. Come on. See what you can do. See if there's any magic left. So we are... Well, Alonso is on to the last lap. I'm pretty sure that means... Oh no, is that Alonso? Is Alonso the way up there? Oh no, yeah, because that means K-Mag is as well. But um, yeah, it's been a, a, we're going to get a point. We're going to get a point for 10th in a race where I made some errors of judgment, let's call it. Nico has actually overtaken Sargent, gained a few places, may get Sonoda um, as well, who's just in front of him. But we'll have to wait and see. But Alonso crosses the line. Uh, and I think because he lapped K-Mag, yeah, K-Mag secures 10th. And... Uh, that's, that's that, I think. Let's watch Nico, see if he can get a move done on uh, Yuki Tsunoda on this last lap. And Maybe he's a little bit too far away, but some errors were made. If I, It's tough. We were in 10th when we were on the soft tyre. We came out in 10th when we went back onto the intermediate. So Hulkenberg lost a couple of places um, with his. He's still battling Tsunoda right into the last corner. As they're fighting for the line, I don't think he's going to have quite enough to get it done. But um, no, he's not. Sonoda takes 13th, Hulkenberg 14th. Okay, the and there we go. There's a bit of a battle on there between Hamilton and Gasly as well. Coming into the final few corners. So we'll just watch that one in. As, uh, has Hamilton got enough left in there? Nico seems pretty happy with 14th. I think that's good. And, and K-Mag picking up another point is always good. Gasly getting points for Alpine isn't what we needed. But luckily Ocon is out of the points and that is the Austrian Grand Prix, a very soggy Austrian Grand Prix. So K-Mag finished one place up into 10th, getting the points, which is good, a four-stop strategy. And um, Nico dropped four places, which is a shame on a four-stop strategy as well. So yeah, I ballsed up. I'll, hand, I'll, I'll hold my hands up there and say that I got that one wrong. Um, but Alpine still sit behind us. They increased by three points on us, but we still have a 15-point lead, which is good. Um, in terms of the pit stops, McLaren up there getting the two fastest. Um, are we not not even in the top ten? Lovely. Um, the fastest pit stops. We were tenth, in fact, so we really need to work on our pit stops. I all thought they were pretty good, but that's what we'll be putting our time into, is improving our pit stops. So at least with that race, we are now 5 million in the positive, which is uh, which is very good. Driver development then, Kevin Magnussen has improved his overtaking and his reactions, which is good. Again, Nico Hulkenberg's control has taken a huge hit, and I don't know why. 81 to 56. Defending is 76 to 77. Maybe Nico is the one we look to replace. Um, Peter Fittipaldi is 64 in smoothness is uh, looking good. He needs to improve, I think, quite a lot if he's going to replace Nico. Uh, ball confidence, they're very high confidence in us, which is good. Uh, we have some car development, which we need to improve on. 
And Theo Porcher won the feature race with Gabriel Bottoletto coming in first in the F3 race. Um, there's another Fittipaldi there, Enzo Fittipaldi. Um, yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. And all of the car parts got through unscathed in the race. Right, I want to have a look at something here. Manufacturing, chassis, number two is installed on both cars. Underfloor is installed on both cars. Side pods, right, so we needed... Let's construct three more of them. It was the front wing as well, wasn't it, that I think we desperately needed for the car because we've only got we emergency manufactured one. So, yeah, we'll get two of those done as well. That'll be the manufacturing projects underway. And then we've got... Do we want to do this year's car or do we want to do next year's car? We do have to put a bit of, a bit of something into next year's car. So we'll start with the rear wing... Have we already done the rear wing? Yeah, we've done one research project in the rear wing, so let's go underfloor, because that's always crucial in F1. We'll put uh, just around about half of our wind hours, uh, wind tunnel hours and man hours, or MAU hours, into this, and we'll put 35 of them. We'll go for that. We should be able to counteract. Well, let's see. We'll go for this now to try and counteract the, the necessaries that we need to do. 30% reduction is pretty huge, so we'll see... What that brings us, we'll put five engineers on that for 1.45 million. And let's see if we can do the suspension had some increases as well. So we'll give this a little bit. 1.5, we'll give like 18 days. We'll go suspension to try and counteract all of the downforce that's negated from the rule changes. Obviously, we'll do a lot more of these as we go as well. We'll put three onto that for 1.3 million. And then can we do the rear wing and the front wing had it as well? Not the side pods. Okay, so rear wing's cheaper. It's not going to allow us to do that because we'll go into debt. Uh, 1.4, 1.6, 700, 1 million. We could do another chassis. Could do another chassis. Just get that on the go. While we've got some wind tunnel hours and man hours left let's have a look at where we rank 768 so dirty air tolerance top speed brake cooling and engine cooling so our cornering speed is actually pretty good i think that's what i'd like to focus on to be honest so that would wow that would make us the third best plus five holy shit balls so let's take off engine cooling take off the lifespan and add that that would then give us the best car for weight the third best car for high speed, the fourth best car for medium speed, and the eighth best car for top speed. And then we whack the two remaining engineers. If we rush it, normal, your engineers will finish the project as soon as they can without rushing. Rushing it, your engineers will put in extra hours to finish the project, mean a higher cost for faster completion. Intent, your engineers will put in extra hours to optimize the design. The cost will be higher, but you will gain a greater car part expertise bonus, which will improve future designs. Ah, it's too much. So we can rush it and have it done in 19 days, or we can do it normal and have it done in 28. So 19 days would be for Spa, and then we'd have to manufacture it. We don't, if you're not, I think, I feel like if you're not doing intense, there's no point in rushing it. I think we'll let that one tick over. We'll let that one tick over and just keep a bit of money in the bank. So that's not too bad. It keeps us from going in debt. We do a lot of that stuff, which is good. Oh, our pit crew need a new training schedule as well. So, no, we're going to do everything we can to get them get the time of our pit stop down. So, gym, uh, gym, gym, and gym. I'm pretty sure they're going to be absolutely shattered by the Grand Prix time. Yes, they're going to be weary. Plus 23% chance of a mistake. We take it. We take it for the next couple of... Uh, the next couple of sessions because we need to get our pit stop times down if we're the slowest team on the grid around pit stops i just think it's it's worth improving doing everything we can to improve our pit stop time which is gym work basically uh, which is just pure gym work i've gone the wrong way there but we'll carry on going uh pit stop drill gym work so by here they're gonna be exhausted by then even though they've got all this rest Wow, okay. There'll be some errors in Hungary, I'm sure of it. Maybe we'll chuck them in a an extra rest day. Does that help? Weary, 
weary, weary, tired, 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 weary, weary. Okay, they're back to weary. That's not too bad. Confirm. We need to do all we can to get that pit stop training down. So 2.49 is our estimated time now. We'll see. Maybe Orient Pallier needs to be improved as well so that we can get that time a little bit better. But yeah, there we go. That was the Australian Grand Prix. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.